Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this one I'm going to show you how you can create your own Fluent APIs in C Sharp. Now when I say Fluent APIs, I don't actually mean web APIs and endpoints and stuff like that, but rather the actual C Sharp to represent itself as a Fluent API uh, chain method approach. And it's actually a very useful technique that many, many libraries do around the NuGet ecosystem and the, and the .NET ecosystem because it makes a lot of sense in the context of a library. You effectively are guiding your users in a very specific path by providing a Fluent API because I don't have to know exactly how your library works and how it is wired up. You just provide the entry point for me and then you guide me into that experience. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do that. And the easiest way to describe what I'm gonna be building is to show you this. So here's an example of the Fluent Docker library, which allows you to use a builder. And then from that builder, you have a Fluent API to create your own container, build it and start it. So you can see that it reads like English. It's new builder, use container, use this image and expose this specific port with those environment variables and wait for port this on TCP for 30 seconds and then build that and start it. We're gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna show you two ways, the simple way and kind of stupid way, depending on what you're gonna do, and also the more handholdy and more guided way, which I personally prefer. It might look a bit tricky in the beginning, but it is actually pretty straightforward and pretty powerful. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and make the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let me just delete this because we don't really need this. And let me just show you the simplest way of uh, using the, uh, the Fluent API approach. Uh, and the simplest one is actually at the builder pattern. So I'm going to create a new user builder here. And you could say something like with uh, login and I'm building here the uh, github user uh, model with name nick chapsas and then a bunch of other stuff as well and at the end you build it and what you end up with is a, a user model so if I show you here this would be user now this is a very naive or very primitive implementation and it doesn't really tie to what I'm going to be showing you today. What I'm going to be showing you is more something like this, where you have the uh, connection and this will be uh, used to build um, a SQL connection in a fluent way. Uh, and this will be something like simple fluent SQL connection dot uh, for server and the server will be localhost and database and the database will be MyDB as user nick and password password and now at the end of all this all you do is connect and let's see how we bring this together so in this class here i have a bunch of private fields effectively and then on each step i'm setting that field value based on what i got from the method and then returning this single instance of the uh, the builder or the fluent uh class and then at the exit method, I actually return the thing I'm intending to build, uh, which is a connection which I open and return. Now, this is a very naive approach, in my opinion, when it comes down to Fluent APIs, depending on what you're doing, uh, but mainly when something is not actually optional. For example, user and password isn't optional or database isn't optional, but I could remove it and the thing would still work and we don't really want that most of the time we want to guide someone in a specific way and let's say we want to tell them to select the server and then select the database and select the user and select the password or maybe here instead of user select a token so you have a, a fork uh, and you can make a decision there as well and then go to different branches so what i'm going to show you now is how you can create this staged or layered fluent api experience for your users and it's going to look something like this I'm going to name this connection one and I'm going to go here and create a new class called Fluent SQL Connection. And we're going to do it the proper way here. And the proper way actually shares quite a lot of stuff with the not proper way, which is the idea of setting fields behind the scenes. Now, instead of actually allowing the user to instantiate the class, I prefer to make the constructor private. So I'll say uh, private Fluent SQL Connection here. And if I do that, you can't just go anywhere and do a new of this class. I can't do new fluent SQL connection because it's private. So instead, I'm going to follow the model where you have a static way to create an instance of this connection uh, builder. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to say public static. And this for now, it's going to return a fluent SQL connection, but this will change. Uh, but it will look something like this, where it's like create connection 
a method that then return a new uh, fluent connection here. And then we'll still need a way to actually set those uh, values and they're gonna look very much the same as they look here. Uh, but they are gonna differ in a very, very specific way. In order to achieve this layered approach, you, or at least the way I like to do it is like this. And these interfaces can actually go in a separate file, but I will just keep it here just so you can see everything in one file for visibility. So a public interface called I, what's the first thing I'm doing? Selecting a server. So I server selection uh, stage. And that stage or that interface will have a single method in our case called public um, I database selection state which is the next stage and now this method will be called for server um, assuming I call that yes uh, the same thing here so for server goes here and string server name goes here and now the next interface I'm gonna create is actually called this which is my next stage so public interface and the name of the uh, of the stage and then public I and what do I want to do select a user so I user selection stage goes here and this will be for or actually not for server what do i call it and database so and database string database and i'm actually going to do that all the way until the actual connect method which is also going to be an interface to represent the final stage so let me just add them here so here we go so we go from server and database user uh, password and connect in the end and then what you need to do is actually quite interesting you need to implement all of these interfaces here so i server selection stage i database uh, selection stage i user selection stage and i um, password selection stage as well as i connection initializer stage i'm gonna go ahead and implement all the missing members and the static method will no longer return the fluent sql connection because we don't want direct access to that it's going to return the I server selection uh, interface stage and this will still return a new fluent sql connection here and then the implementation for this is actually the same it's just uh, setting the field and returning the instance so server equals server and um, return this and i'm going to have to do this for every other method in here so let me just do that and in very similar fashion return the idb connection so this technically looks the same as what we had before but there is a huge difference in how you actually deal with this look at this now you have the fluent sql connection and you say create connection and that's the only thing you can see you can't instantiate this class in any other way and then you can say for server and that's it nothing else so it's a very guided experience so for server local host and then what comes next well next comes the database so end database my db so what's next let's say user so as user and in here you can say nick or whatever your username is with password password and then connect and this will uh, let you create this new connection and that's it and this is a better experience in my opinion if you want a guided and controlled way because now you have a fluent api that goes through every single stage that it needs to go and you could very much actually have a fork stage here where it goes from as user maybe uh, or instead of as user to with token or with uh, some other form of authentication completely up to you but this is just an example of how you can do that now for bonus points i don't know if you've seen this but some libraries do something like this where you can have a sort of a config uh, delegate here then you say something like config dot connection let's say name equals nick's connection and it looks like something like this where you you have this lambda looking thing this delegate looking thing um, to do further configuration this is also a quite interesting uh, thing that i'm going to show you in this video and it looks something like this first you need to have the actual uh, configuration class so let's say public class uh, sql uh, or just connection uh, configuration something like that and then have the property which i named uh, connection name here and you can have many but i'm just going to have one and then what you need to have in that is an action of that type and now the thing actually compiles but just having the action doesn't mean you have the value but here's how you get the value you create the actual config so you say configuration equals new connection configuration and you do config which is your actual action here question mark because it might be null dot invoke 
on the configuration. This is weird, I know, but it works. Effectively, what it will do is it will apply the delegate, the action on the new instantiated version. So if I am to actually show you how this will work by debugging it, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to execute this and hopefully step on that create. Yes, here you can see that we have the action. And if I step over this configuration, this configuration has nothing. It's just a null string, nothing. But then if I step over this one, which has the instruction, then you see that now my initial object has the configuration. And then you can take that and do whatever you want with this. And this should include everything you need to get started with Fluent APIs and method chaining and smart configuration or flexible configuration in .NET and C Sharp. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.